The peace of the Lord be with you, and <clears throat> good evening. This is our devotion for Monday, January 22nd, and uh, our gospel lesson for this coming Sunday, for the fourth Sunday uh, after the Epiphany, is Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. So we're, you know, I've been talking about doing a, a continuing reading of, of uh, 1 Corinthians, where we're also kind of, at this point, doing a continuing reading of the Gospel of Mark. So uh, we're picking up right where we left off last week with that. I'll be getting this out in the early evening, so we'll follow uh, page 297, early evening order on page 297 in the hymnal. And we'll go ahead and start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we sing, uh, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. All right, Mark chapter 1, beginning verse 21. <clears throat> and they, uh, being Jesus and, and his disciples that he's called, and they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath that he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, blessed Lord Jesus Christ, you are the one with all authority in heaven and on earth. And we give you thanks that um, in that authority you have have come into this world, that you have brought the authority of the kingdom of God, and in that you have rescued us from uh, from the usurped authority, the, the um, from the tyranny of, of sin and death and the devil himself. And as we live in the midst of this world where we um, where we seek what is authoritative, we pray that you would bless us in the strength and the knowledge of your authority, that uh, we would be, uh, that we would rest in that certainty that is ours in you. And as we study your word, we pray that you would uh, grant us your Holy Spirit, that in all things we would, we would seek you all the more and know you and trust in you above all things as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so um, here we are in the Gospel of Mark, and, and it's it's just started. So we, uh, you know, we're in chapter one. Uh, we've had we've had the the starts off with John the Baptist, right? And you have Jesus' baptism and his temptation, and then uh, and then we have the, the beginning of his ministry, which we had this past Sunday, and, and the calling of the first disciples, and and then here we are, right? Uh, where where uh, where Jesus is is going into Capernaum. Now Capernaum ends up being. Um, it ends up being like the center of his ministry. It's kind of where he resides. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I don't know exactly why. I don't know that the scriptures ever really specify why. Um, we do see, we'll have next week, uh, I think it's next week, yeah, next week where where you have um, the healing of Simon's mother-in-law. So so Peter, right, Peter's house is in uh, Capernaum. They, they've got, uh, when we were able to go there, uh, they, they still have a site that they that is traditionally thought of to be that house, and um, the, the, the 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 ruins of it, which is kind of neat. Um, so maybe it's connected to to Peter kind of being a being a, a prime guy in the ministry, and and, and uh, you know I've, I've heard, seen things where they talk about perhaps Jesus staying at, at at Peter's house and that sort of thing. But in any case, here they are, they're in Capernaum, and uh, and and the point of this story relates to really to authority. Um, you know, so we've got we've got Jesus casting out the demon, uh, but we, we're going to have this next week too because we're going to have this continuing reading. We're going to have Jesus next week also casting out uh, casting out demons and healing diseases, and um, and also preaching. And in, in in the midst of that, you know, both of these kind of um, rest on 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 a similar theme, and that's 
that's Jesus doing this work by the authority that he has. But this 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 week focuses a little bit more on that, right? So so they go into Capernaum and he's in the synagogue. He's in the synagogue teaching. Uh, you know, so they would gather for the Sabbath. They'd, they'd go to church, which would be probably Friday night. Um, I guess sometime on the Sabbath uh, it could be. Um, but they, but they go into the synagogue. Uh, and then, let's see here. Let me see if it mention if it specifies. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be Saturday night or during the day on Sunday, or Saturday, Friday night or on the day. I don't know if it would be Friday night or during the day on Saturday sometime. But uh, but in any case, here he is. He's in the synagogue, and 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 they're reading. Uh, they're, they're, there's there's teaching, and, and he stands up and and he begins to teach, and they're astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Right. So what the scribes did is they would study. Sure, they'd study the Torah, and they, they, so they'd study the Old Testament. But then they would study all these other previous rabbis that had gone before them, and they would comment on the rabbis and say, well, Rabbi so-and-so says this, and, and, and Rabbi so-and-so says that, and that, that sort of thing. Um, but Jesus just takes the scriptures and interprets them. And, uh, and so, so then he's doing this, and the people are shocked. Well, then in the midst of that, immediately, verse 23, there was this in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God, uh, and I and I couldn't couldn't help but think with this of James, where he talks about faith. Well, so okay, we, we you know we talk about I, I have faith. Well, what does that mean? And and of course James draws out of that that, that faith without works is dead, which of course we we acknowledge. To, you know even though we're uh, even though we say we are saved by grace through faith and not on account of works. You know without works, but by the grace of God we're saved. Um, we, we still acknowledge that works have an important component in our faith, right? That, uh, that, when, we, that when we truly believe, we could say that, that our works uh, manifest that faith, right? And, and so um, James says, well, you know, so you believe in God, that's fine. So the demons and they shudder. Well, this is a, a case in point of that, right? Uh, so, so here this demon is shuddering. He's, he's in the synagogue and he's shuddering. And then Jesus demonstrates his authority all the more. He rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. So not just is his teaching with authority, but he actually shows that authority with, with, uh, with what he does. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And it wants his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Right? So, so this, is, uh, this is Jesus demonstrating who he is. Right? And, and, and how... Uh, you know, this is a, it's not a complicated question, right? Uh, Jesus is, he is the one with that authority. And um, it is the authority of, of God in the flesh, of God and man made manifest, as I keep referencing the, the hymn, this, this epiphany. So, so it's not complicated. But in our day, think about how we've complicated it. Who is Jesus? Is Jesus just one God amongst many gods? Uh, are, are, are all gods... Are all religions paths to the same God? Is is the authority that Jesus has really the same authority that um, some of the other religious figures demonstrated? And and you know how do we deal with those sorts of questions? And that's kind of what I'm going to reflect on in, in the sermon on Sunday. At least you know if, if uh, kind of my, my thoughts come come out on the on the page that way. But um, but but I think that we what we do what we recognize is that in the resurrection Christ shows. Finally, yes, this is you know we see we see the authority of his word here, and and, and then finally in the resurrection the authority is proven right. Uh, he, he 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 raised other people from the dead, so that's a lot, but the fact that he himself is raised that demonstrates his authority. No one stands there and raises him. He doesn't you know like he stands outside the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus it's not like Peter comes to his tomb and then calls him out right. The Lord. He's raised by the Holy Spirit, right? And so then, in, the, in that, we see the authority that he has. We see he has authority over, over death. He has authority uh, over the forgiveness of sins. He has authority over the devil. He has authority over creation. We see that in this, right? And that's, that's who he is. And, and then there, uh, there he rests having authority over us, which is a good thing because it's in that authority that he speaks that word that forgives our sins and gives us life and salvation. And that's what a blessing we have in that, ultimately. Amen. All right, uh, we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for the evenings at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.